I'm Dustin Fowler. Today I want to talk to you about Wilbur Zielinski's migration transition model. It is like the demographic transition model, but rather than explain population trends and how development affects and economies affect those trends, it takes into consideration the other side of demography, how migration is going to occur from one place to another within that cycle. <laughs> Looking back at my boy Ravenstein, he talks about how the number one reason that people are going to move is to promote their economic well-being. They're looking for opportunities, and that's no secret. As we've already discussed with Global South to Global South and Global South to Global North migration patterns, as well as Global North to Global North, we know that people are going to move so that they can gain opportunities that don't exist in the place that they're from. So when we think about the migration transition, the first thing we want to do is just like with a demographic transition, we want to analyze the changes that are going to bring about the transition itself. Stage two of the demographic transition, remember, had to do with the industrial revolution. First, the mechanization of agriculture led to more food being available, which caused a spike, a rapid increase in population. Very quickly, the natural increase rate began to grow as births stayed high and deaths decreased with more food and better health. This not only caused population to grow in these areas, but also caused farmers to start moving off the farm if they got bought out in the enclosure movement, for example, in the UK. They began to search for opportunities in urban areas. And so you see a strong push interregionally in stage two countries from the rural areas where farming was done into newly developed urban areas where there are opportunities in manufacturing. Today, in a stage two country, it might not be so cut and dry like it was during the Industrial Revolution, but you still see where many, many people are gonna leave farming and go live in a big city, even despite urban slums, in an effort to figure out what kinds of things they can do to make higher wages and be better off than they were on the farm. International migration in stage two involves going to a stage three or stage four country to the cities in those areas in an effort to figure out what kind of opportunities exist to get higher wages than in the countries where they're from. We've already discussed that there are some problems with this associated with how migrants are perceived, how lonely they may be from the people that they're leaving behind, and how they don't make high wages to take care of themselves in a foreign country and also to send back remittances to their moms and wives and children at home. Stage three of the demographic transition correlates with a different migration pattern according to Wilbur Zielinski. Stage three countries are recipients of stage two laborers, so in other words, they they receive a lot of immigrant workers to work in cities and on projects and things like this. Stage three countries, as we've discussed in the demographic transition, have more opportunities, more education, maybe a little bit more gender equality. People are starting to choose to have fewer babies. And so the opportunities are a little bit greater, but still this influx of not only people from the rural areas of a stage three country, but also people from stage two countries cause overcrowding in some of the world's fastest growing city. So you can look at places like Dhaka, Bangladesh, you can look at places like Mexico City, you can see that there are huge slums and, and uh, uh, large segments of urban poor that live in these areas looking for opportunities. But so even despite that, they're still better off than they would have been if they would have stayed at home in the places where they were, where opportunities were virtually non-existent. One thing that you do notice though, the more developed the country is, and particularly in stage four countries, is that migrants that move inside the country, internal migrants, tend to move from urban areas into suburban. So in stage two to stage three, you would see where migrants would move from rural into urban settings. But now in stage four countries, according to the migration transition, people are tending to do better. They have more opportunities that allow them to have a little bit of a surplus, which they can live further outside of the city center into maybe your better housing. And so this is what you see happening internally within uh, a stage four country. So there you have it. We've already talked about in these last two videos, the global south and global north, how these different migration patterns exist between each region. And then we talked about Wilbur Zielinski's migration transition. I hope you guys got a lot out of the video. Feel free to leave your comments and thoughts and let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, share, and I'll catch you next time.